So this lecture is about the kind of cycle. So um, please read uh, the chapter 6.7, 10, and 11 to study better about the thermodynamic cycle uh, and the Kano cycle. For today, I'm going to talk about the Kano cycle and how can we make the Kano cycle and why is it important to learn and how can we uh, you know, uh, combine procedures to, to make the Kano cycle. And I'm gonna also talk about the second law efficiency. So at the end of this lecture, I really want you to be able to answer those three questions. Why is the Kano cycle the most ideal cycle? Can we draw this kind of cycle on the TS diagram? How can you calculate the kind of efficiency? And how can you use the kind of cycle for further thermodynamic cycle analysis by using the second law of efficiency? The first question is, why uh, is the kind of cycle important? Because the kind of cycle is the most ideal cycle. So this cycle uh, was invented by the French physicist Carnot, Lazare Carnot. And okay? he lived from 1753 to 1823. That is in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. So now a lot of people uh, really were eager to make nice and very good, um, you know, heat engines. And you know, at that time, Carnot came to you know, wonder like, you know, how he could make the most ideal cycle that could give us the most benefit uh, from thermodynamic point of view. So now in order to discuss more about the Kano cycle, I'm going to move to whiteboard to discuss more. What we learned uh, as a very important postures or components in order to make a thermodynamic cycle was like that. We need a heat input. Okay, and from this heat input, we do certain work. And we need also heat rejection. Many times, work is divided into two processes. One is, you know, part, you know, kind of through the extension. And this expansion process does sort of work that we need to get out of this cycle. And also, this work also has uh, you know, compression. Okay. Now, through heat input, work expansion, heat rejection, compression makes a very important four key postures to make your uh, thermodynamic cycle. That's a very general postures. Now, what Kano thought about was that, can you really make all each possible step reversible? So now, can we make reversible heat input? Reversible expansion work. Reversible heat rejection and reversible compression. Okay. Again, this extension gives us W out, that is work out, and compression is W in okay, and heat input and heat rejection. Now, how can we make the heat input reversible and heat rejection reversible? And how can you make work expansion, expansion work reversible and compression work reversible? Let's talk about the reversible heat transfer, okay? So heat input and heat rejection is basically heat transfer process. Then how can you make heat transfer reversible? Do you remember what we learned about it? Now, let me draw a system. A 
Okay, I don't think that it's clear enough. So now let me just write it down system. Okay, and then surroundings. Now we have surrounding temperature, and now we have system temperature. So in order to make heat transfer process reversible, we know that, we learned that this system temperature is almost the same as heat surrounding temperature. It's very, very, very tiny difference between them would cause heat transfer, but this trust, uh, heat transfer is, can be considered to be reversible. Then let me write it down again. So now, T system should be almost same as T surroundings. That is the condition we have to satisfy to make this heat transfer process entirely reversible. Now, usually many times, this T surrounding doesn't change. Does not change. Okay? So then, while this surrounding temperature does not change, now we want to make heat transfer process reversible. Then what should happen to the temperature of the system? Again, because this temperature system should be almost the same as the temperature surroundings. So in order to make heat transfer process reversible, we must satisfy that your system, your process should be isothermal heat transfer. And that is only possible way to make heat transfer process reversible. Now, how can we make work reversible? What is a reversible work? What did you learn uh, before? So, the reversible, when you talk about reversible process, particularly for the work process, the reversible process goes to isentropic processes. Or, let me make it more clear. So, reversible process is basically uh, entropy generation equals to zero. Okay? So, now in order to make entropy generation zero, uh, when we uh, invert certain work processes, then we can make adiabatic and reversible process. So these two conditions are basically the, the condition that we have to satisfy to make work reversible. In other words, reversible adiabatic process gives us isentropic process. Okay, so when work is inverted, the isentropic process, or in other words, adiabatic reversible process will give us the reversible work or the, 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 the best work possible condition. Then, with that being said, so now, in order to make heat transfer process reversible, we should have uh, the isoth isothermal process. So during the entire heat transfer process, your system temperature shouldn't change. Okay, so that is only possible process where we can satisfy the reversible heat transfer process. When we think about the work processes, now the adiabatic reversible process, or in other words, isentropic processes will give us the, the, the most ideal condition for the work processes. Now, by combining these two cases together, and now Connor uh, was able to make the Carnot cycle, which is composed of entirely reversible processes when we even have 
the key input key rejection or expansion work or compression work in bird. Then how we can make a Carnot heat engine. So the Carnot heat engine is the best thermodynamic en heat engine uh, or the most ideal heat engine. So the question is, how can you make the ideal heat engine? As I said uh, in a whiteboard, in order to make the thermodynamic cycle, we typically should have heat input and expansion work and heat rejection and compression and this compression process goes back to heat rejection. So this cycle uh, it should make this uh, the four, usually the four processes and all these processes should be reversible. Okay. Only when these all processes are reversible, then we can make the most ideal heat engine. Then how can we make Carnot cycle by using the reversible heat input, reversible expansion, reversible heat rejection, and reversible compression. So the first uh, reversible uh, heat input process should be reversible isothermal process. Now let's assume that your Carnot cycle is made of the, um, the cylinder and piston assembly. And inside this piston and cylinder assembly, let's say that we have working fluid. And the initial temperature is Th. Now, uh, well, in order to make uh, the isothermal heat input, your piston cylinder assembly should be exposed to a high temperature heat source at temperature Th. But now, uh, you know, there is the reversible, there should be reversible heat input process. In order to make that reversible heat input process, then your temperature of the working fluid should be constant at temperature Th, Th, which is the same as the temperature of the heat source. So during this process, the first condition you have to satisfy is your temperature during this process is constant at Th. And now, in order to make this Th constant, we must have expansion process together, right? So, along with the isothermal uh, reversible heat transfer process, this piston moves to make expansion, which is also reversible expansion process. Okay, and that should give us the entropy generation from 1 to 2 to be 0. Then how can you make the rever uh, reversible expansion process? Now, the process 2 to 3 is all about the uh, reversible expansion process. So, in order to make the best out of it, let's assume that your piston cylinder assembly is now insulated. Okay. Then, what you can see is reversible and adiabatic process takes the process 2 to 3 for the Carnot cycle. And that is basically isentropic expansion process. And now what happens to temperature during this isentropic expansion? The piston moves 2 to 3 during the expansion. And as a result of this expansion, your temperature should decrease from high temperature Th to low temperature Tl. And after this process, we, have, we should have reversible uh, the heat rejection process which is when we have isothermal heat 
rejection. And same as the uh, my discussion in the process one to two. Your temperature should be constant at TL, and also we have reversible compression during this process. Then last process is again the ideal, the reversible compression process. So in order to make the 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 the, the best case. Your silicon, uh, your cylinder piston assembly is again insulated. Okay, to make your process reversible and adiabatic process. So, what it means is this process should be isentropic compression. process to make this compression most ideal case.